the South City Thriller is here to relieve the little people of Morecambe of the tedium and the boredom of their miserable lives. Now, where are we going? Where's the entrance? Well, I believe our man is over here. Yes, Morecambe, Haid Vanson and Nikita are back at War on the Shore to show you how it should be done. Style, class, action, 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 baby. Come on now, mate, way. This is the new king and queen of British wrestling. Stand aside, subject. There you go. Okay, yeah. shot you with these kids. With the kids? I don't know. Yeah, Welcome Saturday the 4th of March, how appropriate that Ross Jordan is back here in the Morecambe Dome, the place where he first became the FWA flyweight champion. And I'm here again today to make yet another successful title defence for my FWA flyweight title. And you know what, after my ladder match with Spud, I'm feeling pretty good, you know, I'm on a roll. So Bubblegum, you may think it's your night tonight, but it's not. You see. Just like any other flyweight, my friend, I'm going to chew you up and spit you out. And then it's going to even be an even better night for Ross Jordan. Because then after I've done beating Bubblegum, I'm going to win the Battle Royal. And I'm just going to secure my place on Team FWA. Now, before we start tonight's show, we have a very special presentation. Now, this is the fourth year the FWA has been coming to the Morgan Dome. And in that time, the Morgan Dome has become recognised as one of the premier venues for professional wrestling in the whole of the UK. And I'd like to say a big thanks to each and every one of you from the FWA because you made that happen. <laughs> Manager of the Morgan Dome. <laughs> Mr. John Sandon from the Morgan Tourist Board. <laughs> and representing the FWA, he's been right here in Morgan Dome since I best mate. Mr. Mark Kane. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Mr. Sandon, for choosing FWA for us all. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FWA Warren Ashore. As you can see, uh, the FWA is just being acknowledged there with uh, an award of spotlights on Morecambe, issued by the, the, the Council in recognition for everything that we've done for the town of Morecambe, making it recognised for British wrestling. Um, and Johnny Angel was interrupting the proceedings. Typical Johnny Angel fashion, just ruining. It's all very nice having a little chips tea party here. And I don't really want to Seems to like ruining shows too. Alex Shane. Alex Shane, son. I come here to call out the ex. The ex. That happened at New Frontiers. Alex Shane. 
like Shane, I come for you, big fella. Where are you? I call you out into this ring, under this silly dome, to give your ass to the king. Where are you? These two certainly have a story of history, including when they were tag team partners for the last fight on the prom. And it didn't end right there either. The, the two of them are certainly not friends, as you can gather. Well, he's called out Alex Shane, and Alex Shane is, is not here. Alex Shane, we don't know where he is, to be quite honest. After he lost the FWA British Heavyweight title, We, we haven't seen Alex Shane, we don't know where he is, and if I was that young man, I'd be very careful. Okay. Uh, do you know what? I, I shouldn't be surprised, but I am surprised, because you know, there was no need for that. He just, that's just someone from the, I saw him from the local tourist board there, for doing that. No, no, you can hear, oh no, wait. No, 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 no. This will get it. He'll get us banned from Morecambe. No, no, no. There's a member of FWA security there who's just come down and trying to explain to him not to do it. He could, this could get us. He doesn't realise just how serious this is. We've just been given the award. We don't want to now lose the town and lose the venue. The, the FWA and, and the people of Morecambe have worked so hard to make such a, a big part. Oh no, he's just toying with us now. It's when, it's... Please don't do it. It's just when. Whoa, whoa. What? 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 Ooh, who's... Wait a and he just threw, I don't know who that was, but... I don't know who that is, but... Yeah, that's the kind of person he is. He'll start on people giving awards, he'll start on the cameraman and wait a minute, what was what was what was that? Uh, Stevie Knight! Wait a minute, he's in Spain! He swapped Spain for Morecambe! Wait a minute, Steve is behind! Chair shot to Johnny Angel! Johnny Angel is the reason! Johnny Angel! And you can hear the... The FWA security are just piling on top of Stevie Knight Hill! That was Stevie Knight's fight! Oh my... Stevie Knight, I was just screaming for Johnny Angel! The security to keep an angel back and for his own good. But and he's trying for it again. And Johnny Angel was. I don't. I don't. Good evening, Stevie, and welcome back. It's almost one year since I've been to Morgan. Guess what? I've come out of retirement just for you, fat boy. Just for you. Stevie Knight is back. Yeah, welcome back, Stevie.
But while there is tonight, Jonathan, there is a 15-man Royal Rumble. The only problem with this 15-man Royal Rumble is there's only 14 people in it. Wait a minute. There's a mystery entry. Stevie Knight is the 15th man in the Gold Rush Rules Rumble? It's, it, would you believe it's teaching me student? Come on! Come on! A Johnny Angel, the man who tried to run Stevie Knight out of the FWA. Shut your mouth! is back in the FWA for that man, for that man right there, Johnny Angel, and both of these men are now, they're in the Gold Rush Rules Rumble. Hey, mouthpiece, do you know what you're doing? Do you realise what you're doing? You're challenging me, you, you are challenging me, you're a bigger fool than what I thought you were. Remember, I told you, I told you everything you know. Not everything I know. Not everything I know. No rumble. No rumble. No. These people don't want to see a rumble. I've been... Is Johnny, is Johnny Andrew trying to get out of this? No. Oh, the crowd is saying otherwise. I'm a busy man. I don't have time to play with little fools like you. I came for Alex Shane. You want me to fight him tonight? Well, I think the fans have spoken. You come all the way from Spain to find me. You're going to be disappointed because I'll kick your ass every step of the way back to Spain where you can sit through a straw when you've liquidised some paella because I'm going to bust your jaw and your nose again, like I did however many years ago. However many years ago. I'll smash you, I'll smash you and I'll smash you. Just the fun. Just the fun. Yeah, we've already said that's the kind of thing John Angel likes to do. It would be nice to actually see him do this to a wrestler though, rather than a member of the council or an innocent member of security or... You know what, if I was, I wouldn't be making challenges like that with Stevie Nottles about because Stevie Nottles. Hey, no, calm down, lad, calm down. You want to do that? Alex, bring it on. Alex, bring it on. No, Alex, bring it on. Steve Knight, Alex, Shane, Abe, that's there, that's there. Anybody. Oh, what a way to start off here at FWA. War on the Shore 2. What a way to start. What a way to start off. Not exactly the sheltered way. things the way we meant to. And now we're going to kick things off the way we're supposed to. So I will start this the way I should have started this originally. Hello everyone and welcome to FWA War on the Shore 2. I'm Dan Reed and starting off this evening we have a match for the FWA Flyweight title. It'll be the champion, Ross Jordan, coming off a, a, a fantastic victory, although what happened afterwards was definitely questionable, but a, a fantastic victory and a fantastic match against Spud. It was a ladder match back at New Frontiers in February. Now making his way down to the ring, it's Bubblegum. He tonight is the challenger. For the FWA flyweight title, and what an opportunity for this exciting young competitor! Bubblegum has been doing more than just impressing some of the 
of the management of the FWA. He's been impressing more than just the management. He's been impressing a lot of their, uh, a lot of guys backstage with his hard work and attitude. And obviously, most importantly, you, the fans, have appreciated everything that he's been doing as well. The fans spoken. Bubblegum's efforts have spoken, and he is here getting his shot at the FWA British Flyweight title. Uh, uh, I think we're still getting more technical difficulties here. In fact, um, there were some technical difficulties regarding Bubblegum's music. Now there's some um, technical difficulties regarding Ross uh, Jordan's music. This is uh, not his music. This will. Uh, Wait a minute. Well, I'm guessing it is. It's new music for a new attitude. I'm guessing it's Bye Bye Little Dragon, Ross Jordan, and Hello to... What's this now? Randy now must be referred to as The Gift, Ross Jordan, full-time now. Anyone who saw his... Uh, it was a fantastic ladder match that happened at New Frontiers. If you didn't see it, then I implore you to get hold of the DVD. Log on to FrontierWrestling.com and grab hold of the copy of New Frontiers and take a look at the ladder match that occurred between Ross Jordan and Spud. Ross Jordan at one point had the match in his hand. Spud had injured his knee. The title was easy pickings for Ross Jordan. And instead of doing that, he saw the knee on display, he saw it on show, he dived off the ladder unnecessarily to take out and further injure Spud. Spud is not here this evening. Spud's knee still is not at 100%. And I don't know when we're going to see Spud next. I just hope it's soon. And I hope that when Spud returns, we'll see him in the ring with Ross Jordan. Bell rings, both men circling around. Bubblegum getting the crowd in his favour. They tie up. Ross Jordan with a quick headlock there, takedown. Bubblegum quick there with the, the head scissors out. Another lock up. This time Bubblegum gets head. Ross Jordan gets a. This is FWA flyweight action. It's quick, it's fast paced, and Ross Jordan's just getting in the face of Bubblegum there. Ross Jordan is this change of attitude here. You can really tell that he's been trained by Alex Shane. Up oh, and there's slap to the face, disrespectfulness. Really got on the on the nerves there of Bubblegum. Leapfrog ducks the charge. Back shot there countered by Bubblegum as he just slides over the top and he's met with a drop kick. And Ross Jordan backs out of the ring now. He's gonna he's gonna change game plan. Ross Jordan an incredibly fast individual, but the, the speed in this aspect is going to go to Bubblegum. I think the, the caginess there, the, the savviness from someone is going to go to... It's going to go to Ross Jordan. I mean, Ross Jordan made a smart decision there. He wasn't on the offensive. Oh, he charged in, tried to, tried to blindside him. But Ross Jordan wasn't on the offensive, he took that drop kick, he got to the outside, tried to regroup, tried to blindside Bubblegum, Bubblegum one step ahead, dropped toe hold and now has the arm. Ross Jordan trying to counter it now, nips up, takes the other arm, uses the momentum, and now the gift, as he likes to be called. It doesn't need to be more explanation of the fact that the guy has a lot of attitude when he, when he refers to himself as the gift. Great counter wrestling there we saw from Bubblegum. Repositions himself and now he's in a hammerlock. Jordan tries it. Hammerlock. Takes the waist though. Rolls up to the ropes. Bubblegum holds on. Jordan rolls through. Ducks the clothesline. Arm drag countered there with one of his own. Ducks the clothesline there. Oh! Spins around the back. Ross Jordan. Oh! Backs into the ropes. He's dizzy. He's dazed. They're much faster. Whoa! Oh! I don't know. The referee must have said it. it was... Yep, Ross Jordan's given a yellow card, though. 
on a card there, sorry, by by a referee for that obvious low blow. And now the referee starts off the 20 count. And Jordan to the outside now with that elbow. And that was the only way I think Ross Jordan was going to get the advantage here, by cheating. Bubblegum was one step ahead. He's obviously been watching matches of Ross Jordan. He's seen him before. He knows what to expect. He's been studying. Ross Jordan looks like he's taken this match lightly. He didn't know what to expect. Bubblegum was just far too quick. He was coming at him from left side, left side, right side, from behind, from the front, from this angle, from that angle. Uh, and he was just pulling off the stops. And there's an Irish whip. And there's a spinning wheel kick there. Catches him right in the nose by the looks of it. Hooks the knee, hooks the fire leg, sorry. Gets a two count. Wise move there to hook the leg. Spud back to, sorry, Bubblegum. I'm wanting to see Spud in the ring of Ross Jordan, so I want to see some revenge. Bubblegum backed into the corner now, and there's Ross Jordan now with the boot. Ross Jordan, the much taller of the two. Something that you see Alex Shane do, actually, that boot to the corner. Again, you can really tell he's been trained by him. Whoa! Well, he telegraphed that. Oh, over the shoulder, Bubblegum scoots out, ducks the clothesline, runs the ropes and takes a vicious leg lariat, cuts him right back off. It's when Bubblegum was starting to gain some momentum. Oh, come on. Arrogance. That was just pure arrogance from the gift. Bubblegum now is trying to use the ropes to pull himself back up. Ross Jordan sees that and now drapes his leg over the throat, choking him out. Referee administrating a five count. Oh, come on, ref. I think you've had the opportunity to disqualify him now. I think referee's been incredibly lenient. The yellow card was issued to him earlier for that low blow. Ross Jordan should be acting very, very carefully here because he could lose the match. Of course, if he loses the match by disqualification, maybe that's part of his game plan. If he loses the match by DQ, he doesn't lose the title. He now grounds the much quicker bubble gum and places him in that variation of a surfboard there. Now wrenches back on the chin. You see the knee and the base of the spine and the top of the spine. Fans get him behind bubble gum. Bubble gum uses momentum, rolls through, series of elbows, hits the ropes, trying to build some momentum, but takes the knee to the stomach. Turns him inside out there. Oh no, come on, that's not a cover. That's just choking him against the... Ross Jordan needs to be careful. If he does want to come away from this with a victory, he doesn't get himself disqualified. And now just stands on another insulting car. He's not going to defeat Bubblegum like that. Bubblegum is a young competitor who's shown uh, a lot of people in the wrestling industry, a lot of fans, that he has got a lot of fight. And do you know what? I really expect to see a lot of big things from Bubblegum in the future. And you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if Bubblegum took the title. Stop clapping. Ross Jordan not liking the fans getting behind. The fans getting behind is what's driving Bubblegum on. Oh, there's another series of elbows there, but this time Ross Jordan knew what to expect. And he tried to cut him off with that forearm. Goes for the back suplex. Oh! Smart move! What's this shining wizard there? Oh! I don't know, I don't know what to say there. That action was just so quick. It was counter for counter. And Bubblegum ended up with a, an integrity there. Caught him on the shoulder. Oh, back chopped him onto the outside. No, the shoulder was blocked. Ducks the clothesline. Four on there from Bubblegum. Bubblegum, over. Springboard. Oh, he's behind Jordan. Whoa, well, what was this? Interesting. Oh! <coughs> Interesting. Um, uh, the turn of moves there that Bubblegum was going for. We were trying to take Ross Jordan off guard. Unfortunately, Ross Jordan there saw himself in a position and just dropped whatever a move it was that Bubblegum was going for and turned it into a powerbomb. Could have been a variation of a head scissors. But Ross Jordan is back, into, back in control. But give, give Bubblegum a credit. Mafia kick. Ducks the clothesline there. Double clothesline. Both of them almost take each other's throats and heads off. It seemed like they were in the air for an age and both men are down as the referee starts administrating the 10 count. If both men can't get to their feet then it will be resulting in a double knockout and the gift 
Ross Jordan will retain the title. We're up to eight and the gift is up. Bubba Gum is down, he charges, Lee Frogs, he heads the car on the turnbuckle there, and Bubba Gum firing back now, maybe he's had enough time there to recuperate, and, oh, Orbo, what a clothesline, there's a back elbow, hooks the leg, rolls it back through, he's going to quicken the pace now, Bubba Gum hits the ropes, whoa, there's that hurricane runner there, backs him up, into the corner, Ross Jordan taken off guard, Run and drop kick sends Jordan straight back. Comes. Oh my goodness. You saw that boot just run straight through the jaw. And Bubblegum. He's acting like he's on sugar now. Is that a lot? Because he's now oh, too close to the ropes. He was hyping up there. Bubblegum. One of the first to get back into it, he's still feeling the effects of everything that, all that punishment he took earlier. He sees Ross Jordan, he hits the ropes. Oh, Jordan catches him on the shoulder. Oh, straight into the knee, face first into the knee from the fireman's carry. Irish whip into the corner, reversed this time by Bubblegum. I think it's the first time he's reversed one of those Irish whips. Jordan back on the, oh! Boot to the midsection there, and backs him into the corner. Bubblegum now sets him up on the top rope. Climbing now. He's going for a going for a head scissor hurricane on a takeover here. Oh my goodness! Oh Jordan sent into the ring. I think Bobagon landed rather dangerously on the top of his head. That's one of their high-risk maneuvers in the flyweight division. One more! Now he's going back to the top. I'm not quite sure what he's setting up, but it's a dangerous, dangerous move in. Oh, and Jordan shoves the referee into the ropes, and surely that's a disqualification. The referee's being incredibly lenient here, and now Jordan climbing up to the top rope with a... That's the second low blow, really, that Bubblegum has taken. A series of forearms sets him down, and now Bubblegum repositioning himself. Perhaps going for a moonsault here. Oh, Jordan moved out of the way. Boot to the stomach, and now... Oh! That double underhook face plant in. Oh, that's it. That double underhook face plant of Ross Jordan. It's uh, known in some circles as the Angels' wings. And as you heard, ring announcer Greg Lambert there announced Ross Jordan has retained the FWA flyweight title here in Morecambe, opening up War on the Shore 2. Give credit to Bubblegum, there, there must have been a lot of nerves going into this match, you know, but it took two low blows, constant, I mean, come on, I mean, to be honest, in my opinion, he should have been disqualified a long time ago, especially the first low blow was enough for me, but it took two low blows, and then it took that double underhook face plant manoeuvre there to, to get the victory for him, but hats off to, hats off to Bubblegum. I think it's from the experience, the devious tactics of Ross Jordan came through. And the gift, as he now likes to be called, prevailed in this, in this match here. And, he, and he's, he's, he's going to tell people too. He's still, he's still feeling the effects of, of Bubblegum's onslaught though. Credit where it's due to Bubblegum, he put up a hell of a fight. Introducing first, from Longside Manchester, can tell when we're here at the Morecambe Dome because it's the Burberry and that just horrid, horrid yellow. Making their way to the ring now. It's the Manchester Massive along with Donna. Surprisingly, she's actually allowed out tonight, not on curfew. 
facing Joey Hayes. Declan O'Collin stands in the ring. The Manchester Massive. Uh, I think I say this every time I come to an FWS show. I hate Chavs. You ever want a reason to hate Chavs? Just look at these two. Just talk to them. Try to have a conversation with them. making their FWA debuts here this evening at Warnershaw 2 from Scotland it's T2K, Wolfgang and Darkseid. It's, it's, it's the, the Goths versus the Chaps. I didn't see much of uh, T2K earlier actually, they tend to keep themselves to themselves really. They're uh, Fan favourite to see Wolfgang there, easily identifiable by the fact that it says Wolfgang on his tights. What I'd like to point out, these guys just don't wear that makeup there just for the benefit of wrestling shows. They go out wearing that. Interesting. Not the conventional way of, of entering the ring. He thought he'd go through the crowd there in the dark side. And these two. This team is making their FWA debut. Fans are taking to them. How can you not take to them? They're against Chavs. you got to wonder though, if tonight is the Chavs night. You see, for all intents and purposes, the Manchester Massive are the more experienced duo here in the FWA and this is where everybody aims to get to FWA British Wrestling is without a shadow of doubt the pinnacle of British Wrestling and yet everybody aims to get here everybody aims to wear all tag teams aim to wear the FWA British Tag Team titles all singles wrestlers aim to be the FWA British Heavyweight title and hold on and there's the, perhaps some of the experience there the Manchester Massive jumping T2K from behind the Manchester Massive well, they're not undefeated, let's just say that. In fact, they have yet to win a match here in the FWA, but perhaps tonight against the T2K will be their night. Because as I was saying, they have more experience here in the FWA. T2K making their FWA debut. Manchester Massive on the outside. Oh, the, the referee is wearing a. The referee's a chap. Right. Well, as if I did not like him enough from the way he refereed the last match, I now really hate him. That's Joey Hayes in the ring right now. There's Dark Side. Fans getting behind Dark Side here. Not aware if there's going to be any nerves on Dark Side and Wolfgang. This is a big step for them. This is a, a highlight of their career thus far. Nice headlock there from the tie up. Wrenching it in. Joe Hayes backs him into the ropes. Dark Side there, like, whoa, missed the shoulder block. Step forward that time, he got it. Leapfrog there. Oh, Will Barron moved there by. Whoa, got caught. Off the ropes, ducks the clothesline. Oh, from behind. I think Joey tried to catch him in a headlock there, but there's, we saw some uh, bigger power there, bigger strength from Dark Side. I wish we Oh, elbow into the corner. Backs him up against the ropes. Series of forearms there, snap there. Oh, and just drops that forearm into the back. And Joey Hayes. Joey Hayes and Declan O'Connor, you know they've come here to win. They can't come here to lose. I think they've done that enough, actually. Oh! Tilted well into, a, into an armbar takedown there. 
Good counter from Darkside. You see Declan O'Connor getting up on ropes there, showing some concern. Joey Hayes rolls through. Darkside holds on to the wrist. I think he's just... Whoa. Gets onto the top there. Oh, holds on. Joey Hayes very impressed with himself. But there's a running drop kick. Darkside throws him into the corner now. And there's the tag and it's... Declan O'Connor is the, the bigger... The bigger half of this duo of T2K and that's Wolfgang. T2K have been uh, making names for themselves in the, in the British wrestling scene of some of the, the smaller companies. Having some matches against teams such as Pain Inc. But at some point you've no doubt seen being a part of Alex Shane's security. Nice wrestling there from Declan O'Connor. Trips the leg up. Whoa, he flips back up. Declan O'Connor goes to, I think he was gone to hit the ropes and he just got caught. Well, he could have kept up. We saw Wolfgang kick up, and he's a big guy. Declan O'Connor tried to kick up there. I think he's a little bit embarrassed. Like, yeah, I'm going to go for it again. Wow. That was different. Maybe third time to try. Yeah, yeah. Go on, let's... Going to get behind. Let's see if he can do it this time. If not, we get to laugh at him again. What's wrong with that? I hope he fails. Let's have a look. Alright, he's going to give him a hand. Oh, that was a... S oh, he tri oh. You know what, for the first time, I think I've just seen him do something I actually quite like. Mainly because it's the first time I think I'm doing, I've seen him do something that involves a level of intelligence. A chap with a level of intelligence, how about that? Stranger things in life. Oh! Backcracker! Okay, things just went from funny to very serious indeed. We see Wolfgang trying to get in the ring and there's a double team going on with the Manchester Massive. Oh, double hip toss, we've seen this from them before. Oh! Bamford is straight onto the jaw, and there's a double boot there. Almost take the head of Darkseid off. I don't think T2K perhaps took the Manchester Massive a little bit, not necessarily a bit lightly there, maybe they've seen there. Win loss record before, but this is the FWA. It's a lot harder to rack up victories here than elsewhere. And Joey Hayes now on top, neck breaker. And now dragging him, dragging him along, putting the foot on the throat. He's got a five count to get in. Oh, and drives the, drives the knee down there. You've got to set it. Declan no color arguing there with referee. You've got to set it. Declan is uh, the better, the more experienced and uh, better half of uh, Manchester Massive, so to speak. Maybe he's a little smarter. I think he's almost got Joey under his wing. He's the loudmouth one. And there's Joey Hayes now. He's got the knee showing a bit of a vicious side here. Donna running her mouth on the outside. There's a shock. Joey Hayes takes dark side to the turnbuckle. Drives that forearm into the back. We saw him do that air earlier. Sets him up on the top rope. Dark side not quite with it. You see he's out of it now, he's going for a superplex with Joey Hayes in the Manchester Massive and Darkseid fight now, he doesn't want to go over, he pushes him off, Darkseid now going, Darkseid's now on the top rope, oh, well that was different, he dived off the top rope with that driven DDT and now both of the down, that was a very impressive maneuver. Referee administrating the count. Darkseid gets to Wolfgang and Wolfgang is in and here comes Declan O'Connor who runs straight into a clothesline. So does Joey Hayes. Wolfgang is just waiting on them. There's a backdrop. Oh, there's a drop kick from the bigger man. 
Wolfgang now scoops up. Joey Hayes just snake eyes into the corner and off the ropes. Oh, Joey ducks the clothesline. There's a forearm to the back. Series of forearms. Oh, here comes Dark Side. It's series. Oh my goodness! That's interesting. That was um, an inverted total elimination there out of nowhere. Both men went to the left and near decapitated them. T2K have now set up for something. Off the ropes come. Whoa, Declan O'Connor caught Wolfgang there. Dark side, however, caught Joey Hayes and scoops him up into a fireman's carry. Joey Hayes is trying to fight it. Oh, he, he fights out of it, but Dark side catch, catches him with that kick. Very unorthodox there. Give him credit for uh, thinking on his feet and then using his feet. Covers there. I don't think this is going to be enough. There's Declan O'Connor there to make the save. Declan, we've seen this before. It's, it's like a wheelbarrow hip toss there, and he hooks the leg. He gets the shoulder up. And there's Wolfgang. What's that big guy doing on the top rope? Whoa! That's a swanton! Very impressive from the big man. That takes out Declan O'Connor. Joey Hayes gets run through. Joey Hayes, however, counts to the nose. Oh, Blue Thunder Driver! I know Joey. Maybe he should have been going. He literally should held on to the leg there. And he's taking this off the tail there. And there's Dark Side. <coughs> Wait a minute, what's Dark Side setting him up for? Dark Side setting him up for something. Oh. Whoa! Oh, howl's over. Oh, I'm not sure what, what's going on there. But Joey Hayes hits the ropes. Whoa! Oh, wait a minute. Further breaker? No. This this is this move is banned in some in a lot of promotions and oh my god. Well it's called the Verter Breaker for a reason. And T2K rack up a victory in their debut here in the FWA. And Manchester Massive rack up another loss. You, know, you wonder what goes through the minds of the Manchester Massive every time they lose. And T2K celebrating. These guys are going to be happy and ecstatic. They get a victory in their FWA debut. Okay, we're going to have some Greg Lambert there asking us to show their appreciation for the Manchester Massive. I don't think it's going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dangerous Damon Lee's biggest opportunity. This is what every wrestler that gets into the business in this country, hell, even Christopher Daniels, the fallen angel, he wanted to be the FWA champion and he succeeded. Everyone wants to be the FWA British heavyweight champion. And Dangerous Damon Lee has got the biggest opportunity of his life coming up right now. You see the DDL, Dangerous Damon Lee. I was speaking to him early this evening. He goes, tonight it's not just the best, not DDL, Dangerous Damon Lee. It's don't dare lose. Goes, I'm not going to lose this match. This is my night. A 
let's see if DDL, Dangerous Damon Lee, can make the most of that. You see, and the fans are behind him, and it'll be interesting to see what he can make out of his... And this is Hayde Manson's first title defense since winning the title at New Frontiers. And, and there is the woman that helped him, the Queen of Chaos. And she certainly caused some chaos back at Broxbourne at New Frontiers, Nikita. Expect the scene got these people on the front of a um, GQ magazine or something like that. The FWA British Heavyweight Champion. This is an opportunity to tell you guys if you didn't see New Frontiers. Again, if you didn't see New Frontiers, then get onto FrontierWrestling.com and sorry, I was. Um, A little bit lost for words there. It's just uh, keeps looking rather perky. I don't like that at all. I'm all for perkiness. All right, back at New Frontiers, Hayde Vanson defeated Darren Burridge in a qualifying match to make it to the five-way final. Hayde Vanson went into the match. Alex Shane went into the match as FWA champion. It was Alex Shane defending the title against Hayde Vanson. Jody Fleisch, Johnny Storm, and Hayden Manson now looking around. So the Queen of Chaos has has the mic. Was that the beautiful people have arrived? Oh, he needs his own announcement. He needs an announcement. He has an announcement. Fans getting behind DDL. DDL, 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 DDL. Oh, oh, we've we've now earned the time. We've we've earned the earned this opportunity. Oh, here we go. means fully yourself. I think Freddie Mercury is rolling over in his grave. Can someone get the mic out of his hand and can actually start a wrestling match?
The fans are behind Dangerous Damon Lee, DDL. I want to see a title change here, maybe. DDL incredibly confident. He knows everything that he's ever worked for is to build up to now. It is home county. I wonder if Damon Lee wins the title tonight. Will Nikita suddenly start putting her arm around him? We should go with anyone who's got the gold. There's more to this relationship with her and Hate Vanson than what we know of. As I was saying earlier, back at New Frontiers, which again, if you haven't got, check FrontierWrestling.com and go to merchandise and buy a copy of that on DVD. It was a fantastic show. Hey Vanson won a five-way final for the FWA British Heavyweight title against Alex Shane. Joe Legend, Jody Flash, and Johnny Storm when he pinned Joe Legend after the interference of the woman on the outside who now accompanies him to the ring, Nikita. Nikita at one at one time was was the love interest of the show stealer Alex Shane. They lived together in fact. Everyone was kind of expecting. I don't know what anyone's expecting, but. Hayd Vanson is the, is the trainee of Alex Shane and Nikita is the ex-girlfriend of Alex Shane and now the two of them are together. And the title that was Alex Shane now goes around the waist of Hayd Vanson as Hayd Vanson and Dangerous Damon Lee lock up. You heard Hayd Vanson make reference to the fact that Dangerous Damon Lee uh, is a champion of a local promotion. Or around the Bolton area. But this time he's going for the big one. He's going for the FWA British Heavyweight title. He's a little bit cautious. I think both men are. He doesn't want to lose the title in his first title defense. Hay gets a little bit of the upper hand in that lock up there. Dangerous Damon Ling wants to make the most of the fact that maybe Hayde is coming in with a bit too much confidence. Hayde is coming in after winning that five way pinning Joe Legend. Hayde knows he's got Nikita on the outside. Hayde probably doesn't see Dangerous Damon Lee up to his level. In fact, I think he made that quite you know, obvious earlier. When Hayde. Whoa, Hayde comes charging in there. And the champ goes to the outside. Whoa! Oh my goodness! And just destroys the barricade! There was some force behind that baseball slide drop kick there from DD Allen. DD Allen's come here to. DD Allen's come here to take the title, and I think everyone's a little bit. I mean, the crowd are coming behind that. No, he didn't just take out Hey Vance, did he? He took out the barricades that went around the whole ring. <laughs> hey, Vanson just getting on the, on the case of the crowd there. And... <laughs> DDL scoots through the, through the bottom rope there. Okay, he's got a smile on the face now. Maybe he realizes, okay. I think there's more mind games there, but maybe part of him is realizing, okay, I, I can't take. I can't take DDL that lightly, and there's a go behind there by Vanson. Vanson is definitely uh, more used to bigger matches. 
Definitely more used to the spotlight being in his face. So, nice. Wrist lock there, he went underneath and took the arm drag. takes that head down. You see Damon's trying to uh, get out there, he's pushing the forearm against the head of Hade Ranson, he's using the, 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 the legs there to try and kick up. He's also he's trying to keep his shoulders off the mat there as well, you see he's rolling to the side. His hands get, his fans, sorry, they're getting on their, uh, the case of Hade Ranson, uh, sorry, of Hade Ranson by cheering on DDL. They want to see Dangerous Damon Lee, their Lancashire native, take the FWA British Heavyweight title. And there's an arm drag there. Hip toss, Hey Vance walks straight into that. And there's a big scoop slam. DDL back on the offensive, hits the ropes. Wait a minute, there's, well, there's Nikita. You see, that's why Hey Vance was obviously so, you know, cocky going into it, even more so. He was always known for his arrogance, but oh, there's that, he set him up for that kick. He drove him face first with that that leg trip there, and now he's hitting both ropes, getting extra momentum. And you heard the sound of feet, meat, and chest. That's certainly going to win them. Hade Vanson now. Warm and thudic on his pace there, which is a vicious European uppercut. Sends DDL to the corner. The foot just being driven into the chin, into the throat of Dangerous Damon Lee. Referee pulled the foot away, and that could have been a yellow card offence. He shouldn't have to do that. And there's a series of knife edge chops followed by right hands, and those were closed fists there. Run the knee into the corner, and there's another chop. A little small jabs there following. Oh! Big boot there to the chin, that finally drops DDL. Snap Marin and hooks that arm. And you can see the expression of pain on the face of DDL. And now from this angle we can see that arm bar. And now he rolls through into a variation like a stomp puller in a cradle at the same time. Let's go of that maneuver. DDL makes his way back up. Hade Vanson back on top though. Another snap there. Goes through. Variation of a Marty Stroll cradle there. DDL kicks out. Hade Vanson trying to get the win. Very quickly on. European uppercut now. Backs DDL into the corner. DDL comes out fine and though. Maybe, maybe he's got enough of him to get a second win up. Cheap shot there. Thumb to the eye. DDL doesn't let it stop him though. Maybe he, got a, maybe he was able to block it. Only got partially got it. Well, this is the name, DDL, saw Hate Vance and Telegraph it, takes the Dragon Whip. And now there's a half crab there, he's seen an opportunity, and now he's stepping through with a, it's an interesting variation of an STF that he's got on there. Well, and there's Nikita, she's back on, she's in the ring, come on, that's a yellow card, or maybe even a red card. The, the, DDL taking his eye off Hate Vance and Hate Vance and... Well, oh, from behind there's a Paul Nelson, there's a... DDL, series of elbows blocks it. Telegraphs the clothesline. There's a full Nelson. Dragon suplex. Off the ropes comes Hayd Vanson. Single foot there. That's the variation of the Mafia kick. Catches him in the chest. Hayd Vanson plays with the plays with the camera and the crowd there. Whenever DDL seems to gain some momentum, there's Nikita on the outside. This is not supposed to be a handicap match, but that's exactly what it's turning into. Hey, now wrenching back. And then just pushes him, shoves him away there. The arrogance, the cockiness, 
That's the South City Thriller. It's DDL's just sent to the floor. Wait a minute, that's Nikita. He's just got the... Wait a minute, that's... That's a heel... That's one of those high heel boots. That one... And the, and the referee is over there with Hayden. She's just choking him out. You can see the expression on his face. You see his face is going red there. Nikita there just all of a sudden moves out of the way as if you know, she's done nothing. Oh yeah, she's just trying to help him in apparently. Oh, oh yeah, there's... Such a Samaritan. Oh, the referee saw it. Listen to me, the, the referee obviously saw it and... Outside interference, finally, at some point she had to be seen. Hopefully this will take her out for the rest of the match because she'll know that if she is caught again, that will be an automatic disqualification. No doubt Dangerous Damon Lee will be ranked number one to get a rematch for this title then. Hayden Vanson now. That front chancery there. Just grounded, taking all the air out of DDL. These fans trying to get behind him. DDL responding to the fans. You can hear them. There's a series of series of forearms. Oh, Irish whips. Oh, oh, there's a close. He just ran in. There's not a lot behind it, but it's just a lot of heart. And now Hayden Vanson backs into the corner. And DDL, I think, you know, he's he's standing in the ring now. I just think he's trying to gain his breath. I think there's been a lot taken out of DDL. He's just trying to get the air back into those lungs, trying to get a second win perhaps. Oh, when he did go in, Hey Vanson played possum and pulled the trunks and sent him into the into those ropes and that second turnbuckle. And there's a five, that's a five count, come on, that should be an automatic DQ. Yeah, the referee points out then, if he's already got the yellow card, a second will be a DQ. And if he does that... And there's a series of four hours from DDL. DDL shows some heart, I'm going to cut off again. There's a knife edge chop. And there's another. And the third one sends him down. Hayden Vanson, who has been on the offense for most part of this match. And a lot of it is due to the outside interference in Nikita, but like I say... She's been caught once in yellow card. You've got to wonder if she'll stay out of it now. And the South City Thriller perched on the top rope now. Maybe taking a little bit too much time. Oh, picture perfect elbow. One, two, and DDL kicks out. He's showing that don't dare lose attitude of his. Hayde rolls him back up. Maybe if Hayde Vance had hooked the light then, he'd have got the victory. Too much arrogance. Oh, this time he catches the boot. He took the elbow the first time. Telegraphed it. This time, once again, hits, the, hits those turnbuckles. And DDL runs in but gets back dropped out. Oh, four on there blocked. Shoulder tackle to the inside. Oh, that was an evader. That was a slingshot. A slingshot flatliner there. Rolls over there. Puts the near leg and there's Nikita pulling out the Celsius. Come on. Now the referee must have seen that. That must be an automatic disqualification. And I'd say this match is going to be... Wait a minute. The referee hasn't called it. Oh, there's a crossbody Pescado to the outside from DDL. Wait a minute. There's Nikita to the outside. Oh, the referee must have seen that. That must be a DQ. Oh, why is it a DQ? Oh. And DDL distracted there and Hayden Vanson from behind. Oh, there's a suplex snap star to the outside. That'll do a, a lot of damage on the lower lower. Wait a minute, what's... Hey, Vanton. Oh, my! Oh, my... Lord. He just slingshot over the outside. The sternum of dangerous Damon Lee was crushed between Hayde Vanson's entire body weight and that cement floor. And DDL's back in the ring. Oh, I mean, I didn't see that. Oh, just kick down. That's it. All the air, all the oxygen, all the heart. I think it just got kicked out of him. And he just... Hayde Vanson now just picks him up. That was just pure strength there. Oh, and there's an, 
Emerald Fusion there, and that's gonna be it. Oh! Didi Elsh again showing that don't dare lose attitude of his. He knows how important this match is. He wants to be the FWA British Heavyweight Champion. There's an interesting variation of a of a camel clutch there. He sits using DDL's own arm against him. And look how far he's being pulled back there. And DDL is not quitting. And there's the knee of Hayd Vanson driven into the back of the neck. And now Hayd straight back on that neck now. This time using the forearm pulling him back. Rolls through. Oh no. Oh this could be it. If he can't reach that ropes he could choke him out. Oh, oh, he got it. Oh, and, oh, he just breaks the arm. Come on, that can't be allowed. That should be a... No, oh, come on, he's got to break the hold. The referee has been extremely... Oh, oh, this could be it. I said this could be it. It's an extremely dangerous move. No. The fans are behind it. Oh, hey, Batson drops it. I think he realises it. DDL was coming out, and DDL's coming out with season four. The adrenaline is perhaps Russian. Irish rip, no. Not enough in DDL. Too much in Hade still. He was able to reverse and hit that snap suplex. He sprawls over for the cover, but once again, not hooking the leg. And now there's a triangle there. It's that triangle choke. And he's raking on the face there. Come on, ref. That's going to be some of the most questionable refereeing I think I've ever seen. can see DDL is keeping his arm up there he's trying to keep himself in this rolling through so he hasn't got all of the all of the pressure of Hey Vance's legs oh he goes through he's back on top now and he rolls through now he's got the legs maybe he's going for that that STF maneuver of his and now Hey Hayden's in that STF and there's the key here on the ring apron. And the, and the key to is once again distracted the referee and DDL is showing that. Oh, damn it. Every time he gets into a position where, you know, he's on the offensive and we've seen him go for that STF maneuver several times and each time there's Nikita to interfere to stop Hayden Vanson from potentially tapping out. And Damon gets distracted as well. Wait a minute. Oh, the drop kick missed. Scoop slam. Oh, no other like bomb there. And he falls into a cover, but there's no leg. Oh. The fans thought that was three. I've got to say that was going to be close. And yet the inexperience of DDL shone through there. If he'd have hooked the leg, I think that would have been it. Now DDL going to the top rope. I don't think this is why he's taken a long time to get there. And Yes, there's Hayde there with the left hand. Hayde. Forearm shot there. And there's some headbutts. And there's some more forearms. Oh, I don't know what Hayde's going up for. Maybe a super power. Top rope superplex going on here. Oh, top rope T-bone. Oh. Top rope fisherman T-bone. Some description there. Spools over. And the leg is hooked again. You gotta wonder if, if both men had hooked the legs and set different parts of the matches, we may have had a result already. And hey, once again going to the top rope. Will he have Oh Lucky for Hay, he landed with, not crotch first, but he landed with his knee on there, but unfortunately. David's going to go after that because he's going to then try and apply that STF maneuver of his. And I think that's that's weakened the point. And now Damon stepping back, steps over, and there's that variation of the STF. And there's Nikita again. And Nikita got referee's distraction. And Hayden's in that STF and he's trying to crawl to the ropes. Oh, oh Hayes tapping. And the referee. And Damon thinks we've got a new champion. Damon doesn't realise that the ref... Well, now he does. And there's the experience of Damon... Oh! Hayde 
tried to jump DDL from behind. DDL just moved in the nick of time. He took, took Nikita out in the last split second. DDL is on fire now. The adrenaline is rushing. Series of clotheslines in the corner to the top goes DDL. Come on, Damon. Do it, Damon. Diamond, Damon, Dust in the corner. Uh, oh, the foot. <coughs> the foot went on the rope and then underneath it. Once again, the constant interference of Nikita is costing Damon's. Oh, he throws him. Oh my god. He threw it. And there was a, he threw the referee down. There was a low blow. And there's a. Oh, oh my. How to break a neck in one move. That's it. So much went on there. Damon Lee's emotions got the better of him. He threw the ref down. Really got to wonder if that should have been a DQ in itself. Hayden Vanson used that opportunity to hit the low blow. Nikita then dropped him throat first on the top rope. And then perhaps the most dangerous move in wrestling, the, the most dangerous, certainly the most dangerous legal move in wrestling is, you've got to wonder what difference there is between that and the pile driver. Both times they're being dropped on their head with all their weight above them. Hayden Hansen seems to have found himself a way around the illegal pile driver way by hitting that, and now he's strumming that belt like a guitarist. Nikita, who should really be wearing that title alongside him, they should split that title in two and wear half and half each. Or maybe, the strap, maybe make the strap extra long and wrap it around one another. Because she is just as much the FWA British Heavyweight Champion as he is. Well, you heard it from there. Certainly not the most romantic voice you'd ever hear, but the point was true. And the fans are making their voice heard. He tapped out. to our fourth match this evening and is the all-star wrestling guest match and there representing all-star wrestling is Mark Five Star Belton we haven't seen Mark Five Star Belton in a long time here in the FWA but he is back and he is representing all-star wrestling with him he made uh, first really started off with Tour in the country of All Star Wrestling now. Uh, talking to Greg Lambert. I'm sorry, uh, correction. As this is All Star Guest Match, I'm not going to just ask Brian Lee if I will refer to the introducing by his his name that he's known in All Star Wrestling. Five Star Flash. Yeah, and Five Star. Bye bye, Five Star Mark Belton. And hello, Five Star Flash, and welcome to the FWA in an All Star Wrestling Guest Match. To Morgan, yeah. after four years, yeah. British wrestling legend from All Star Wrestling, the Wildcats, Ruby Bloodstone! 
man. Here is a true legend of British wrestling. What this guy hasn't done in the wrestling business isn't worth doing. The Wildcat Robbie Brookside, 22 years of experience. He made his name firstly as part of the Golden Boys tag team with a man now more famously known as William Regal, back then known as Steve Regal. He went on to form the Liverpool Lads with Doc Dean. They competed all over the world. He's competed in various Super Junior tournaments over in Japan, wrestling for New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's wrestling for All Japan Pro Wrestling. And these two men here are representing All Star Wrestling, Britain's oldest wrestling promotion. A little bit of a okay, and a little bit of confusion under the under the rules here. All Star, this uh, FWA referee. This is an All Star Wrestling guest match, and. Uh, Okay, Roy Brooks are asking if we explain the rules here in the FWA. Um, okay, the, the rules being explained there to Roy Brooks side them up. Sorry, five star flash. Uh, this is kind of new. It's, it's an all star wrestling guest match, but uh, it's under FWA. FWA rules as such, I think, is what they're they're implying, and they're not liking it. Or at least they're just trying to adjust. Tie up there. Brookside got the upper hand. There's another tie up. Brookside got, got the takes that arm. Goes into a butcher's hook. Flash backs him into the corner. Sorry, backs him into the ropes there. Puts the break. And again, more. Five. The five count really is. Um, seems to be throwing him out. Robbie Brookside saying, if he's told to break the hold, he will break the hold. And close um, one, and it was. Uh, Robbie Brookside saying he will play by the rules. There's that top wrist lock there. Give us a heckle then. And it. Robbie Brookside now talking to the crowd. Oh, scoots, scoots through underneath the legs. Nice counter there by Five Star Flash. All Star Wrestling in the FWA will do battle for the Inter Federation Cup, Inter Promotional Cup. That will take place when we are back here at the Morecambe Dome in May. Check on to www.frontierwrestling.com for more details. Roy Brookside scoops behind now. He has that full Nelson. It'll be Team FWA v Team All Star. You've got to wonder if uh, Roy Brookside and Five Star Flash will be representing Team All Star. The winner of tonight's Battle Royal is guaranteed a place on Team FWA. Five Star Flash breaks it. Sunset flip. Referee goes down. Two count. Fans appreciate this uh, very good solid technical wrestling we are seeing. We're saying Robert Brookside, a true legend of British wrestling. Famously turned down a job with uh, what used to be the World Wrestling Federation. Here's the trainer. Oh, that was vicious. Rolled through on that wrist lock there. Well, now he's asking what... Well, 
Rob Brookside again haven't. Never mind, get on with it. I'm English and I'm in England. I should be able to wrestle like an Englishman should. Um, well, I, I agree with Robert Brookside in saying that this is the FWA with, um, we're reinventing British wrestling there and there are some rules that are taken from the British scene, there are some rules taken from the American scene and there are uh, some rules that we are inventing ourselves, so to speak, such as the yellow card and red card system. Um, Robbie Brookside having problems with um, Greg Lambert. Uh, Nice technical wrestling here we're seeing from the camera there. Rolls through. So, um, might not be that commonly known, but uh, Greg Lambert is part of uh, the FWA management committee. So just uh, showing some of his disdain as Greg Lambert is around ringside. Brookside now. Goes underneath now, breaks that waist lock, turns him into the hammer lock. Look how he drives that down. And oh, look how he hooks that leg as well. He's trying to get him into a, a, into a pin and predicament. Well, he's just tying him up in a knot now. Okay, we have to, uh, a human pretzel here. And, oh, no, it's English. I don't think we can say pretzel. It wasn't invented over here. We have a first ever human curly whirly here. Robbie Brookside is just a... Uh, Technical genius, really. Five star flash rolls through, takes the arm. And Robbie Brookside is sent over. You know what? Robbie Brookside having problems with some of the fans here. Both of, them, both of them thought, uh, well, Five Star Flash was actually ahead of him there. Looks like he was going in for a tie up. Belton took the leg, sorry. Five Star Flash took the leg. All Star Wrestling again. Rolls through. It's this variation of a, a surfboard there with an Indian death lock. Maybe it was a British death lock. Now flash on top with that hammerlock. Brookside up to his knees. He's going to try and roll through this. Get up to his foot. You see he turns inwards. Oh, interesting. Backdrop. Flash held on. Sunset flip. Brookside kicks out. Flash straight back to that arm. See the way he's got that wrist bent there. And you see the... The elbow there, it's hyper-extended almost. We see some beautiful wrestling from these two. Oh! Brookside went for the slam, but Five Star held on. Five Star flash control the arm there. Brookside nips up. Look at with his right leg, he tries to take the leg of uh, Five Star Flash out with underneath him. Flash sees that, goes round the outside, takes him down, keeps hold of the wrist, drops the knee, and is still in control. The Brookside, who, I don't know how many counters he's tried already, but the guy knows so many that the sooner or later he's going to find one that works. Oh, monkey flip. Flash still holding on to that wrist. And there's a leg. And there's a second. And there's a third. And then he twists in. A lot of pressure being applied there on the wrist and that elbow. And just. He scoots underneath and drops the elbow and that wrist on that mat. And oh, now Brookside's got his. Got five stars neck. Viced between his legs. Brookside's turning to try and keep his shoulders off the mat now, and now he rolls through, head scissors, and Brookside found the counter, 
for that wrestler. It's like I said, it was only a matter of time. Brookside knows so many counters. He's been around for 22 years so that sooner or later he was going to be able to get out of that. But Five Star must have held on to that wrist up for a good five minutes. And the fans getting behind Robbie Brookside. Both men shake hands. Great sportsmanship shown from these two all-star competitors. We've seen both of these competitors wrestle before for the FWA. Going back to 2002, in fact, Robbie Brookside was... Uh, I remember one match in particular, Robbie Brookside against Flash Barker for the FWA British Heavyweight title. Mark Five Star Belt and went undefeated in the FWA for almost a year. Oh my! The tape pity penalty kick from Robbie Brookside. Straight from the grounds of Goodison Park. That was vicious. Gets a two count. Give credit to Mark. Sorry. Five star flash. Nice snap. Suplex there. Jumped up with it. And Flash fills the pain. And, and now the referee is. Robert Russell is wondering why there's no, you know, 10 count. Classic British rules determine that when a wrestler is knocked on, knocked on the ground, is off his feet, there is a 10 count. If he cannot get up within that 10 count, that is classed as a TKO, technical knockout. And Robbie Brookside's not understanding this. He's here as a Millstar Wrestling guest match. And there's a forearm shot to the back. He's believing that this should be fought under classic technical British wrestling rules. And he's not, again, all the British rules state that you should not start on a, you know, you should not strike a man once he is down on the mat. Roy Brookside was letting him get up first before taking that snap mare and applying this submission hold. Another variation of the surfboard here. Pulling back on the arms. Both legs in the back. You can see the expression, the gross of pain on the face of Five Star Flash. Fans behind Robbie Brookside. And, and rather so, as we were saying earlier, Robbie Brookside is a true legend of British wrestling. Earlier, we saw Mark, sorry, again, we saw Five Star Flash, again, getting back to the All-Star Wrestling name, holding on to that wrist lock, and now we are seeing Robbie Brookside stretch and apply submission hold after submission hold, variation after variation on Five Star Flash. He's great finding the head there. You see the knuckles are actually digging in to the side of the head. The, the body is, uh, is in a scissors there. They've got the leg great find up as well. Now Brookside is coming from the opposite direction with the knuckles still in the head. Brookside was trying to use those, sorry, uh, Five Star was trying to use those uh, cross chops there, but look at that, he can't get out because Brookside still has that arm bar. Variation. Oh, he turns it into a pin and hold there. Referee there, incredibly late. I think we need to review this referee's contract. He has not had a, a good night so far and he's turned into a Boston Crab. This is a, a British wrestling move. This used to see the demise of many a competitor. And is one of the trademark Robbie Brookside moves. You see... Oh, now he's got it all on. You saw Five Star put his head down, lift his chest up, trying to tuck himself in and take the pressure off. Five Star got to the ropes. And uh, Robert Brookside's really feeling offended at, at this count once he's in the ropes. And he's been saying that once, he's, once the competitor he's against is in the ropes, he will break the hold. Five Star backs into the corner there and... Uh, and, and Brookside still has a problem with these rules. He's, uh, again, I mean, it's not something we want to point out here, but. 
Roy Brooks started giving uh, Greg Lambert a lot of attention, um, asking him why he you know, wasn't informed about the rules earlier in advance. And Irish whip, five star blocks it, through the legs, goes, oh, knuckle up, switch through, oh, catches it from behind, oh, he scoots through the legs. Known in some circles as the artful dodger. Five star flash actually defeated Doug Williams with that same series of maneuvers here in Morecambe over a year ago. In fact, it was probably getting on for two years ago. There's a backslide. Out. Both men taken to the ropes and there's Brookside with a head. Counts. Oh, he got him that time. I think he got the shoulder up on the first time. Belton, uh, sorry, five star flash got the shoulder up. Robert Brookside leaped forward a little bit more, and that time he got the three count. And uh, that was a fantastic technical uh, British wrestling match from two true, two true purists of the British wrestling style. The rules were a little bit off for both men. Roy Brookside, 22 year pro, the veteran, off on his hands to the younger, 24 year old, five star flash. He's been, been competing now for, been on for seven years. So they both have an opportunity in this rumble to be part of Team FWA to take on Team All Star right here in the Morecambe Dome on May 13th. This is sponsored by West Coast Motorsport West Tires. And it is our main event of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time as MC Greg Lambert just said. It is a 15 man over. Fought under Gold Rush rules. The rules of the rumble are as follows. Please stay in your seats, please. Your own safety, please. Earlier today, a random draw took place between the 15 competitors in tonight's rumble. In a moment, the wrestlers who drew numbers 1 and 2 will come down to the ring. Every 60 seconds thereafter, another wrestler will enter the ring. Elimination can only occur when a wrestler is thrown over the top rope and so both feet touch the floor. Classic. The last of the wrestler remaining in the ring will be declared the winner and tonight the winner of the rumble will automatically gain a place on Team FWA to take on Team All-Star on Saturday, May the 13th. And this will be interesting. Who drew number one? We can see partner against partner, friend against friend. And God love it, foe versus foe, because I'm all first seeing people kick the living hell out of each other. Oh, uh, we know, we heard this music earlier. It's the music of the gift. Ross Jordan. Oh, he has to, he has to get his intro in. He has to get the intro in. He has to be treated like a star now. He has that FWA British Flyweight title. That means everything to him. Ever since he's got that, we've seen a change, a, a, a change in attitude from him. And here he comes. Look at it's a battle royal. It's unfold under Gold Rush rules, and he's coming to the ring with his flyweight title. It's not a flyweight title match. No, let's let's come to the ring and and, and show off that and show off that belt because it just means more to do more to you than your family. It means more to you than your friends. Gift Ross Jordan, no doubt, f probably feels that he deserves to represent Team FWA against Team All Star as he's a champion. 
FWA All England champion Leroy Kincaid originally scheduled to be in this be in this battle royal, but unfortunately due to injuries had to withdraw and Bubblegum, we got a Bubblegum's got a chance for revenge from earlier tonight. We saw a series of low blows and both men have drawn well Ross Jordan draw num drew number one and now Bubblegum draw number two and, and now Bubblegum He's gone hyper again He's had more sugar And there's a head to the corner And there's a head to another corner I think we'll have to give this a name. I think we'll call this the Sugar Rush. And now, I know he's trying to... Oh, how how much better. Okay, I wouldn't put the belt around his waist. But if he can eliminate Ross Jordan from the Battle Royal... Surely, surely that would put him back into a contention. Especially after the way the match went earlier. Over an old-fashioned rake to the eye there. Stops that and brings him. Oh, he still can't see what he's doing. It's the countdown. We're at number one, and who's who's number three? Mark Sloan. Oh, it's and here is the founding father of the FWA, going back to 1999 down in Portsmouth, the Fratton Wrestling Alliance. You see him nursing an injured shoulder there. Whoa, 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 Ross Jordan uh, almost went out there. Bubblegum was in there to meet the specialist. Sends him to the outside and out. Uh, goes after Ross Jordan. Uh, not the wisest move to do. Mark Sloan, who was the longest reigning FWA All England champion up until Hank Vanson got the title. And now both of them taking turns now and just choking out Bubblegum. Mark Sloan's got to be one of the higher ranked competitors for the FWA All England Championship or maybe even the Flyweight Championship. As I said... Simon Valor? From the FWA Trainer School, what an opportunity for him to make his name. This is our um, interesting hairdo. I'm not quite sure if he's going to take over the world, wrestle a match, or do an aerobics fitness video, but he's running corner to corner and clotheslining anybody that's in sight. And now, wait a minute. Bubblegum and, and Simon Fowler working as a team now against Ross Jordan, who's never not on. And Sloan from behind, who's got so much experience uh, against all of these guys sees an opportunity with Bubblegum who has his back to him as I was saying earlier and especially Mark Sloan has got to be thought as being a top contender for the FWA All England title Dom Travis well, wait a here's Dom Travis is a he is another FWA trained competitor in fact um, he's actually from the school in Manchester, but uh, he refuses to be acknowledged as being that, as he doesn't want to be associated with them. As you can see there, as he goes after another FWA Manchester trainee. He doesn't want to be thought of as being part of FWA Manchester. He's supposedly better than them. We'll see in this match, see what kind of impression he can make. And, and I think, actually, Simon Valor just got eliminated by Dom Travis, and Dom Travis is stamping his authority First elimination, Simon Valor. Wonder if he's going to do an aerobics fitness video, or if he's not, he certainly looks like he needs to do one. But good job done, kid. Dave Rain is in there now, and he's going after Mark Sloan. Last time we were here at the Morecambe Dome, we saw a tag team competition between Dave Rain and Chris Egan, representing FWA Manchester, against Mark Sloan and Ollie Burns, representing FWA Academy down in Portsmouth. FWA Academy were victorious, and no doubt Dave Rain wants to get the measure of revenge, and he's going straight after the specialists. Oh, vicious mafia kick there on Dom Travis. You know, Don Travis probably doesn't even want to say he was trained by anyone. He probably wants to say he's self-taught. 
Wait a minute, Bubblegum's got... I mean, there's... There's Dom Travis from behind, just drives the knee and... He just saved Ross Jordan, I don't know why he done that. And the count is on again. Mark Sloan, the trainer of such... Well, we have to be with Here it is, with the ultra-age, Ollie Burns! And here comes Ollie Burns now. So now we have Team Team FWA Academy and there's the Onsa Rage at ringside and, and now look how they're going after Dave Rain from FWA Manchester. And that's how Dom Travis isn't there to help out. Dom Travis doesn't care, he's only interested in one person, clearly. Obviously he thinks himself as kind of a natural, I'd say a self-taught. He's more concerned with bubblegum. And he and Ross Jordan are now trying to eliminate and you see the arms of Bubblegum there hooked underneath that rope. Much like so is Dave Rain. There's a forearm, there's an elbow. But two against one. It's a boot to the midsection now and only burns from Dave Rain. Forearm there. The count is back on. Oh wait a minute, there goes Dave Rain and... Yep, he's gone. The Academy rules supreme again over FWA Manchester. And Stevie Knight! Stevie Knight returns to the FWA in nearly a year. Right hands on Dom Traverson. Oh! Dom to the eye. And there goes Dom Travis. Self taught? No. There's another legend in Stevie Knight, and he throws him outside the ring. And now. Is that the gift Ross Jordan and Ollie Burns teaming up on that shining light Stevie Knight and now Mark Sloan and Ollie Burns Team FWA Academy? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute. Well, this is that. Well, that's certainly intriguing. I mean, oh, for a moment now, I thought we were gonna. Mark Sloan and Stevie Knight used to used to team up here in the FWA or somewhat of an odd cup when I thought we were seeing that. Oh, I think Sloan just took a bit of a low blow. He 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 attacked his, he attacked the student, maybe a bit of tough love there. And there's Joey Hayes and I wonder if Donna's gonna get in the ring. Wait a minute, Ollie Burns isn't really. Oh Stevie Knight now. Whoa, 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 there's a close fist, and now goes Sloan. Sloan's on the outside, and he's eliminated, and there's Tyrone there. And Stevie Knight now catches, catches him off the ground. Maybe if, if Mark Sloan hadn't have come from behind on Ollie Burns, Ollie Burns might have been able to have helped him. But the Academy have been taken out of the Battle Royal by the returning Stevie Knight. Three people eliminated by Stevie Knight in his return. The shining light is definitely shining here in Morecambe. And now Joey Hayes trying to eliminate Stevie Knight. Bubblegum from behind or Joey Hayes. I'm not sure, quite sure why. It's really we're trying to, it's every man for himself and Stevie Knight and Ross Jordan. And there's Declan O'Connor. And now we've got the Manchester Massive in the ring. And now they're, both of them are now trying to get them. Hey, maybe, maybe the Massive could win a, win the, win the Battle Royal here. That a class is a victory, obviously not together. If one of them could win. I wonder what that would do. And now Ross Jordan trying to get Bubba over the top rope. Stevie Knight with a double noggin knocker, as he used to be called. For the Manchester Massive and Stevie Knight on the offensive. And Declan O'Connor is upside down. The countdown begins again. Who is next? Wolfgang of Team 22K, and now he's after the massive and there's a, wow! If it weren't for the fact there's nothing in there, you'd think that those guys knew each other extremely well. And there goes the massive Wolfgang! Not only did Team 2K defeat them earlier this evening, Wolfgang just single-handedly eliminated the massive himself. <coughs> Not a good night for the massive, and a fantastic debut for Team T2K. Bubblegum almost went out there from Wolfgang. 
Stevie Knight trying to eliminate the Geth Ross John and now the much bigger Wolfgang he won't be competing for the flyweight title he's got the Geth oh from behind Stevie Knight with a low blow and, a, and now he's trying to eliminate Wolfgang I think we might see that there's another countdown and the action's just so fast Bubba going back on Ross Jordan Bubblegum and Ross Jordan has got to be pointed out over oh, number one and number two and here comes he has got to be thought of as a favourite the British heavyweight champion coming into the match this late on attack and Wolfgang from behind and there goes Wolfgang he's eliminated Hey Vanson playing to the crowd Bubblegum's practically out of it And Stevie Knight from behind on Hay Vanson. Well, this will be interesting. I'd love to see Hay Vanson be Stevie Knight. And now Stevie Knight tries to eliminate the British Heavyweight. Got to say, whoever eliminates the British Heavyweight Champion is going to be thought of as a ranked contender, surely. Countdown, who is next? The Queen of oh. Chaos, Nikita. The Queen of Chaos has entered herself into the into the battle royal here. She wants to represent Team FWA. I always thought she just, well recently I I just thought she only wanted to represent, you know, Team Vanson and Team Nikita. And, oh wait a minute, she eliminates Bobblegum and Bobblegum takes a nasty knock to the floor. And now, three on one. The gift Ross Jordan who drew number one. Oh, if, if Ross Jordan won this, as much as I can't respect the guy, you'd have to for being number one and then winning this battle royal. Both Nikita and Ross Jordan. And the, and the thing is as well, all three of these all three of these participants in the ring right now are out exchange train students. These three know each other very, very well. Teaming up on the, the veteran, Stephen Knight. And here comes DDL. And he just pulls Hate Vanson the, on the, to the outside. And these guys, Hate Vanson hasn't been eliminated. And DDL hasn't even gone into the ring yet. Oh, Nikita. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't have done what you done earlier, should you? Yeah, oh, there's Ross Jordan to the side. Uh-oh. You believe in a thing called karma? Okay, she's offering herself to Stevie Knight. And you know what? I'd take it. Take it, mate. Sir yeah. Seriously. Oh, he's got her by the hair. And, and I'm pretty sure DDL's going to like what he saw earlier. I didn't want to say anything, but for some reason he referred to her as eight stone of silicone. But I, I don't believe that's true. In fact, Nikita has now been eliminated by Stevie Knight. Stevie Knight. And now DDL and Hank Vanson going toe to toe. Close line. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh! Both of them go out and, and number 15 is Johnny Angel and Stephen Knight's already been in there for some time. And hey, Vanson and DDL eliminated each other. They're continuing to fight on the outside. Nikita's on the outside and now I think we're actually going to see Stevie Knight and, and Johnny Angel. We saw it, it started off the show. We're going to finish the show. Stevie Knight charges in and the, the veteran, the teacher, Johnny Angel catches him and there's a series, there's a leg drop and there's an elbow and that's a big man dropping a leg and dropping an elbow. Here's a man where if he become the British heavyweight champion he would truly, the term heavyweight would really mean something if he held the title. And I was just picking up, oh that's the test stick in the claw! Oh, now he's biting him! Whoa! Oh, ow! Unorthodox, yes, effective, yes! Deeply disturbing and disgusting, yes! And Irish whipped into the corner and the fans are behind Stevie Knight in his return to the FWA! The student is having his way with the teacher. It's a measure of revenge after what happened last time. But the teacher takes control again. And there's a knife edge chop. 
Irish rim, no, Stevie Knight held on. Reverses. Irish rim into the corner. Whoa. Oh, the power of Johnny Angel just put him on the outside there. Gut shot there. Stevie Knight over the top. And now he's trying to eliminate him. Wait a minute. Where do I spy star flash? What's, what's he doing? Wait a minute. He's not. Is he in this match? No, he's number 16. I can count. Wait a minute. Ooh, I don't understand. Five Star Flash is just... I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Five Star Flash from who earlier was involved in that fantastic All-Star Wrestling guest match is just eliminated. Now he's got the he's got the award and there's Robbie Brookside. He's, he's got the award that we saw given to the FWI earlier for and Robbie Brookside. I see what this is. Mark Belton is, is jumping team F, a, a, a possible member of Team FWA and Robbie Brookside is shown in the area ways. He's very much teacher and student with Robbie Brookside and Mark Belton. Sorry, Five Star Flash. And these guys know each other. Oh! oh no! I thought these guys were all about classic British wrestling and no one really represents classic British wrestling just as, as much as Steve Inoil, perhaps. Robbie Brookside and Ellis, some students from Team FWA and the Manchester School have just rushed the ring and, and look at the expression on Five Star's faces. Team All Star Wrestling have just they've just ruined the show. They've just ruined the battle. What? And all star wrestling of just. Well, I don't know what's. I don't know what's. What the hell I mean? Was there a. Was there a winner? Oh, there's, there's some heat confrontation going on between Greg Rammer, who was. I mentioned earlier, is. He is a part of FWA management. Just behind the scenes. Involvement that Greg Lambert has, and now Stevie Knight is in the ring, and I, I, I'm at a total loss for words. Listen, you listen to me, Brookside, Bolton, you pair of skinny little shits. You listen to me. I, I'm going to apologise for the language, but at the same time, I'm going to defend it because it's all proud that you represented all star promotions and Brian Dixon. Brian Dixon is the worst promoter in this country. So again, listen, he's the promoter of all-star wrestling. FWA runs through my veins. I will see you, Brookside. I will see you, Bellin, back here. May the 13th, 4 sing for me Stevie they want a war we'll give them a war who's their commentator I'll show them I don't even think they have a commentator and the fans are cheering FWA the fans are behind FWA And there's five star flash and look at the smallest. Lambert, Lambert, you've got your first match because you, you are trying to be someone that you're not. You're trying to be the big fish in a little pond. I go to Japan. I go to Germany. I go to Mexico. I don't come to a shithole like Morgan and try and be someone as pretentious as you. You've got your first match. Hey. 
Bring your big hitters. Bring your Alex Shanks. Bring your Doug Williams. Bring your Johnny Storms. <laughs> we got the lot of all star. The top promotions England has ever had. Not trying to be. We do it. Oh, I can't believe it. I thought all star wrestling were. I will bring Alex Shane, I will bring Jody Flash, because for 15 years, me and them boys are sick of bitter old men like you. Bitter, twisted old men, and we are going to kick your ass. There's nothing you can do about it. I will see you back here, May the 13th. Well, there you go. Add it to your, add it to your diaries, people. This is where you want to be on Saturday, May 13th, the Morecambe Dome. It'll be Team FWA against Team All Star Wrestling. Team All Star Wrestling hold the, the British Inter-Federation Cup. We in the FWA want that cup back. I don't know who won the who won the battle. I'm guessing it's a no contest. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us here at FWA War on the Shore 2. Make sure you are here at the Morecambe Dome again on Saturday, May 13th. FWA versus All Star Wrestling for the British and the Federation Cup. Thank you and good night. Get this on film. Right, Stevie Knight, you better get ready. Robbie Brookside, you better get ready. Five Star Flash, you better get ready. Because I'll tell you what, the next person who stands in my way of my challenges or my, how can I put it, my quest in the FWA. Anybody else stands in my way. You know, I let things slide, let things go. But Stevie Knight, I'm coming for you first. Anybody else stands in the way, I'll eliminate them. Tonight, I'll let that go. Because it seems they're on a, they're on a me, uh, the men on a mission or I don't know. But tonight, I'll let that go. Now, the line is drawn here. The line is drawn here. Okay? Anybody else? This goes out to everybody in the FWA. Everybody in All Star. Everybody in these 10 pence promotions up and down the country. Anybody else stands in my way are doing what I need to do and they will pay. And that's coming from me, Johnny Angel. So you better take that to the bank. You know, ever since I arrived in Morecambe today, people have been saying to me, Stevie Knight, why have you come back from Spain to the FWA? The answer's pretty simple for me. 15 years ago, when I began wrestling, there was a lad called Johnny Angel, big time wrestler for Max Crabtree, then Britain's biggest wrestling promoter. One day I was wrestling Johnny Angel, looked up to the guy, thought to myself, this will be a great match, I'll learn a lot in this match. As it turned out, Johnny Angel was a little bit of an asshole, beat me up, broke my jaw, broke an eardrum, smashed my eardrum, broke my arm, went to the hospital, and I laid in the hospital and I said to myself, Never will it happen again. I will get my revenge against Johnny Angel. But all that did, Johnny Angel, all that beating that you gave me, and it wasn't just once, Johnny Angel, it was maybe three or four times. All that did for me was make me angry, make me determined. I went in the gym. I became one of Britain's best wrestlers, most successful wrestlers. While you, Johnny Angel, you just fell by the wayside. I mean, what did you start doing, Johnny Angel? Start digging roads for a living or something like that? I was laughing to myself. But deep down, I was a little bit upset that I was never going to be able to get my revenge on you, Johnny Angel. And then in 2005, Johnny Angel, you returned to the world of wrestling. I thought this was great. It meant I'd finally get my hands on you. So, tonight, I come to Morecambe, smash you over the head with a chair. Absolutely fantastic. And then we do a Raw Rumble. Who's left in the ring, Johnny Angel? It's me and you. And I almost, almost, Johnny Angel, had my revenge on you and chucked you out of the ring. However, Mark Five Star Belton came into the ring and robbed me of my victory. This isn't the end, Johnny Angel. All it means is, I've got three problems on my hands now. Johnny Angel, Robbie Brookside, and Mark Bellum. Am I worried? No, I'm not worried. 15 years I've been doing this. Now's the time to show just what I can do.